Hello, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of What the Heck is He Talking About? <laughs> actually, uh, <clears throat> we're actually going to do a Revit tip today. The Revit tip today is how to use design options or how to do design options in Revit by using groups without using the design option tool. Now, mind you, the design option tool in Revit is powerful. It is an amazing tool, but it's difficult to figure out. It's really complicated, and sometimes you just get your brain all twisted up in it, and it's really hard to figure out. So why not just use another function in Revit that works just as easily, actually even better? Ooh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Let me put my face right over here. All right. And, oh, would you look at that? Virtual BIM management. You're a BIM manager where, no matter where you are. And wherever you are in the world, that's where you are. Always remember that. Okay. So, check this out. Let's go to our 3D. This is the building we're talking about. <laughs> Fantastic little architect's office that we have built here. And let's go inside to the first floor plan. Now, design options can take you many different directions. I totally understand that. You might be designing the layout of the seating in a large auditorium. You may be laying out um, a bathroom layout and men, men's room, women's room, different options, or you might be laying out some student rooms for a university housing project or a hotel, uh, the lobby, whatever. And sometimes when your team or the designer can't come up with exactly what he wants, he has one or two or three or 50 different possibilities or options that he wants to show, we often run to the design options in Revit and we try to figure out that whole, how I'm going to figure it and show it. And it gets pretty confusing. But if you use groups, my friend, you can accomplish the same thing really fast and easy. So let me just, let me simplify what we're doing here. Let's use design options on this conference room. Okay, let's just go there. Design options on the conference room are going to be um, this layout, which is four tables around, as round, uh, I mean four tables, four chairs around a round table, which works perfectly fine. There's room to walk in, get your seat. I've got a little bookcase over here, a shelving, and then there's a TV um, on top of it. So until we can afford a big screen TV that mounts to the wall, this is how we're going to do it. Okay. So this is one of the layouts. Perfectly legit layout. I know it, but I've got other ideas. Okay. So that's where this is going. I've got, I've got other great ideas. Maybe, uh, hmm, maybe I, my, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this TV right here. Okay. One of my ideas <coughs> is a table, a big table, a square table with chairs around it instead of a movable round one. Ooh, okay. Good idea. So let's go over here. Um, in our families, I've come down to furniture and here's a, here's a rectangular table. Perfectly good table. And I hit my space bar, mm -hmm, orient it the way I want. That looks perfectly good. How about I put this um, TV right on it? And here's a chair. I'm going to highlight one and hit Create Similar on the keyboard. CS, Create Similar. And rotate it into place and place it. Okay, I want one right here and maybe right next to it. There's another chair. And that's a little bit close. You guys must really like each other. Okay, I'm going to move you apart a little bit. There we go. I'm going to take those two chairs. Mirror them to the other side. Where's mirror? There it is. Mirror. The other side. Okay. That looks really cool. That's going to be one of my layouts. And this is going to be one of my layouts. But I can't have one of them outside and tell the client, just imagine with me. Okay. Here's how you do it. Here's how you use groups to make this whole thing work. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to say, I'm going to pick these items that are going to be in group A. So I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to systematically um, pick the different items. There's the, whoops, there's the TV and the shelves. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get the items you want. If you accidentally pick something you didn't want, dang it, 
hit the shift key and that will remove the object out of your selection set. Okay, now that I've got these objects, love it, love it, here we go, make a group. Okay, so here we go. This group, I'm going to call it um, Conference Room Layout A. Perfectly good name. Ding! Okay. Now here's where the trick comes in. You ready? This insertion point that you guys see me dragging around can be placed anywhere you want. We can place it in a, you should put it in a, a logical place so that we can find it. Like, I'm going to place it right on the corner of that. Maybe that could work, but what if that moves? Hmm. Put it on something that's not going to move. In this conference room, this bottom back left corner is not going to move. So I've got my trim here, and I've got the back corner. I'm going to take this and put it right there. Bam, in the back corner. Okay? So that is where this insertion point is for this conference room. And then I hit delete. I just deleted it. <laughs> Whatever. It's still a viable um, uh, model group. So if I look over here in my model groups, oh, conference room A, shoo -wee, it's still over there. If I highlight it, I can drag it over, and all i got to do is click right here where its corner is, ding, and it pops in where it's supposed to. Okay, you with me? That insertion point mattered. Okay, so I'm going to hit delete. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this pack of of um, objects. I'm going to bring them into my conference room. I'm going to say, okay, I want this table right there near the wall. That looks legit. I mean, that's beautiful. I'm loving that. Okay. So I'm going to grab those items. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I got seven things. Oh, I've got the word conference room. Shift, get out of my... Okay. So now I've got my six objects. I want that to be the conference room layout B. Okay. So I hit go on the create new and so here we go Con create new um, group so here is conference room layout B okay and I say okay now it automatically puts the insertion point at the center geographic center of itself oh I know that but if I swap these two out for each other they're going to use that insertion point as the swapping location so what I need to do is be strategic. I need to move this to the same place that the other group that I'm going to, you know, the other option. So uh, am I going to move it over here? If that's where I had left it, yeah, but not today. I'm bringing it over here. Not today. I'm bringing it to that same location, okay? So because it's in the same location, friends, look at this. I can pick conference room, um, and I just glance over my properties. That's conference room layout B. And because it's a group with the same insertion point, I can click over here and I can say conference room A. Ding. Conference room B. Ding. Revit's not actually going ding, that's me, see? Ding. I'm making that noise. Okay, so anyway, the um it'd be cool if Revit was had sound effects. <clears throat> I'd have much more fun. Okay, so you see how that's working? But then some of you are gonna say, well, I understand your layout's really cool, Mike, but you see, when the conference rooms lay out this way and the TV's over there, you can't have windows on that wall. But look, when you go to conference room B, then you, oh, you, what if you wanted, here, let me just go edit group. You say, oh, I see, because you're using the same wall, that's legit. But what if, what if you edited the group and you moved all these items, Mike? What if you rotated them over here 90 degrees? And you wanted to place them against this wall. Hmm? And then you say finish. Well, that's great and all. It's using the same insertion point. See, all I did was move furniture. But now look, you've got windows behind. And if we swap those out, that may look really nice for you in this configuration. But Mike, conference room B. That doesn't work over here. There's window behind. I'm like, dude. Let me show you what we can do here. Okay. All right. Calm down. So if I highlight this window here, okay, this is this window group, and I copy it to the clipboard, I'm going to paste it over to the side. Let's just say I paste it on that side. So, okay. <clears throat> For this guy here, see this, this group here, I want the those windows in the group. Makes sense, right? 
And so I'm going to say edit group. And when you're in this kind of pasty looking mode, you can add objects to your group that are not in it yet. I can say, you know what? For this layout, I want these two windows. Okay. And finish group. Okay. Now I'm going to swap the group out with A. And then for the A group, edit group, add, I want these two windows. Finish. Okay. So, when I am showing group A, I included the windows which are on that wall, the left wall. And when I swap out for B, the ones on the left wall disappear and the ones on the north wall appear. I'm telling you, you guys need to explore and use groups as design options. It will simplify your life. And when you guys finally decide which direction you're going to go, you could hit ungroup on your group and it drops all the objects back into the main model if you feel like it. But you don't have to. You can leave it as a group eternally. But in my humble opinion, I believe that people should make a decision, you know? So let me just say that out loud. Designers need to go ahead and make a decision instead of leaving design options forever in their project. When you know, know that you are heading down a certain path, go ahead and click and ungroup that and let those objects just be in the model. There's no reason having extra groups laying around in there if you're never going to um, swap them out for another or if you're never going to use them. Um, if you have 50 of one object or one gr of a group, you should leave them as a group because if you edit one, they all fix. I'm just saying. But if you've only got one and that you were using it for a design option, ungroup it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. All right. I'll get off my soapbox and say, you guys have a fantastic day out there. Design something amazing today. And until the next time, happy reveting. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.